and the Republic of Selling Armed Forces and those retirement of 37 officers from Arslav. Now, the Ministry of Defense and the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces wishes to inform the general public that the Defense Council, D.C., meeting of Thursday, 18th January 2024, endorsed the retirement of 37 officers from the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces in the following categories. Well, six officers from the rank of second lieutenant to major were discharged voluntarily. Eight officers from the rank of second lieutenant to lieutenant colonel were discharged compulsory on the grounds of absence without leave a wall. Eighteen officers from the ranks of lieutenant to major were discharged compulsory on grounds of subversion. And five officers from the rank of lieutenant to lieutenant colonel, lieutenant to colonel were discharged compulsory on the grounds of misconduct. Now, the decision is postured to Section 169, Subsection 1 of the Constitution of Sierra Leone, Act No. 6 of 1991, including other instruments on administration and discipline in Sections 26 and 27, Paragraph A and Paragraph B of the Army Orders, Act No. 1 of 1965 of our SLAF. In view of this, the public is further informed that the details of officers affected in these categories will be published in the Sierra Leone Gazette. And now in another news. Now, the Public Accounts Committee in Parliament has stood down three MDAs after discovering some financial inconsistencies and lack of supports in documents to validate payments in the 2022 audit report. Milton Maga University and Road Maintenance Fund Agency are among the three MDAs. The chairman of the committee, Honorable Singapore Solomon Thelma, says whenever an MDA comes before uh, the committee without any evidence, they will levy a fine against them. Samuel Nisoya reports. Investigation into the 2022 audit report continues with the Public Accounts Committee in Parliament scrutinizing and interrogating members from various MDAs with demands for document and queries on negligence on the part of MDAs. In today's hearing, four MDs faced the committee, and three of them were stood down over issues relating to ineligible expenditures. As the probing commences, auditors pointed concerns around MDAs. The termination of staff under the Mizimagai College of Education and Technology on 31st December 2021, we noted that the university offered contracts to staff for one year starting from the 4th of January to the 31st of December 2022. We, however, requested a contract agreement between the university and employees, but they were not provided for audit inspection. Yes, sir. You have them? Yes, sir. Where are they? Why didn't you give them to the auditors? I did, sir. You did? Yes, sir. So you see what I'm saying? The chairman of the committee, Honorable Senge Paul Solomon Thomas, following challenges regarding MDAs presenting supporting evidence, says... Next time you come here without proof, we'll find you personally. And that will be deducted directly from your salaries. The next time anyone comes to this committee to say, we submitted this without proof, we'll find you. It's only going to the other issues. You know, because we have so many other institutions to look at today, that's why I'm standing you down. Honorable well, members, I want to stand with my guy down at this point. We'll call you again. Thank you very much. Here. It was a smooth ride for the National Civil Registration Authority, who, despite some minute queries, escaped being stand down by the committee. You know, the auditors actually went to NCRA and they, they found out some research. NCRA hurriedly corrected them. Management letters were sent to them relating to withholding tax and other taxes. They hurriedly corrected them. Having stood down Miltimaga University, the committee for the slammed armor on Guma Valley Water Company and a road maintenance fund agency. Uh, 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 DG, yes. I'm standing you down. <coughs> Go and prepare your books properly. Tell him to look at his books. Tell him when you come before this committee, don't come and begin to fantasize. 
The committee is set to continue its probing tomorrow. Another MDAs will have ample time for interrogatory sessions. Samuel Tony Sawyer, AYV News, Freetown. The Ministry of Health and World Vision, Sierra Leone, have received a grant of over 100 million U.S. dollars for a three years project for the control of tuberculosis, HIV, and malaria and to be bring to an end before 2030. Acting Chairman for Country Coordinator Mechanism, Mary Roger, said the project will provide drugs, educate affected and non-affected persons with information on ways to prevent themselves from tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS, and malaria. Sheikh Mohammed Silla has more on the story. Sierra Leone and vast majority of African countries still lack access to the tools and skills that will help them increase research publication output. Researchers in Sierra Leone and many African countries are still impacted by limited access to local and external funding mechanisms, high cost of publication fees, weak research infrastructure, lack of nurturing and mentoring programs. Um, the three years grant will reinforce the effective delivery of HIV, TB, and malaria services and support Sierra Leone in achieving its prevention, testing, and treatment goals for each disease. Acting Country Coordinator Mechanism, Mary Rogers, speaks more on the project. The grant that has been provided by Global Fund. $126 million, 444 and some dollars have been allocated to Sierra Leone from Global Fund to implement programs on the control of HIV AIDS, malaria and TB affecting the lives of our people in Sierra Leone. Sagani Chao, Country Director for World Vision, Sierra Leone said their role is to complement the work of government and monitor the service providers in delivering drugs and disseminating the right information to the people. Principal recipient two, in short, PR, uh, would be complementing the work that uh, the Ministry of Health as principal recipient one would be doing. In a nutshell, uh, the principal recipient one in charge of uh, uh, clinical and biomedical activities uh, would be supported by the principal recipient two in the World Vision International Sierra Leone in terms of demand creation for uh, access to services. World Vision would be uh, working on uh, the three disease. It's a multi-component grant and as PR2 uh, would be working on uh, HIV, uh, TB and malaria. On HIV working with the uh, key uh, affected population for so the treatment uh, to be effective. So in a nutshell, World Vision will work on the uh, three uh, components of the program. Chief Medical Officer from the Ministry of Health said the role of World Vision is key and commended the work of their partners. As they are actually going to be complementary. You know, we are Ministry of Health. We are doctors, we are nurses, you are health professionals. We have our roles and responsibilities. You like it or not, we are not good community people. We are not good communicators. Yeah? And in this day and age, we have the knowledge, we have the know-how to plan these things. But communicating that to the community has ever been a challenge to us. We will not be able to get, to get it. Yeah? And as I told you, HIV is very complex because it is key population, um, you have a lot of key population space. The same thing for TB, you have a lot of key populations in the space. Shiku Mohamed Sile, AYV News, Free Town. Ministry of Cultural Affairs, the National Tourist Board and the Relics Commission are spearheading a transformative campaign with the theme, Tourism for All. This campaign seeks to not only showcase the rich cultural heritage of Sierra Leone, but also to position tourism as a catalyst for strengthening local communities. The recent sports light shifted to Tiwa Island, a gem nestled in Sierra Leone's natural splendor. Christiana Marima Bangra reports. Tiwa Island is an inland island in the Noa River, 
about 12 km square, located inside the Upper Guinea tropical rainforest in southeastern Sierra Leone. This beautiful island is covered by a lush rainforest and has an impressive biodiversity and a high concentration of universal species. The Director of Environmental Foundation for Africa has underscored that Tiwa Island is a biodiversity hotspot with around 9,000, which is around 9,000 site plant species. First and foremost, the benefits of an informed population of Sierra Leone about the value of places like Tiwa Island. Because if the vast majority of Sierra Leoneans hear about Tiwa, and they start to connect with it emotionally. What effectively that means is that uh, more and more people really start to value nature. Main officer of tourism Aminataya Almami Frank Kamara explains how tourism will help generate income in the society. And she furthermore stated that hosting universities is one of their roles to see improvement of tourism sector in Sierra Leone. Tourism has a benefit of majority. First, it creates employment facilities for all ages. Um, thinking of the old, middle, the young, tourism creates that um, employment facilities. Christiana Maria Mabangura, AYV News, Abu City. Well, as part of strengthening organizations to respond to emergencies in Sierra Leone, Catholic Relief Services has, through its Empower project, signed a memorandum of understanding with Caritas Freetown. The memorandum of understanding will, among other things, tailor technical assistance to address the organization's areas of focus for capacity strengthening to responding to emergencies in the country. Ronald Joe Movia reports. Rooted in its Catholic social teachings, Catholic Relief Services has over the years shown commitment to its principle of subsidiarity with the understanding that communities who are the closest to local challenges are the craftspersons of their own development. The building and strengthening of local leadership and institutions is a show of CI's approach to accompanying local institutions to serve the common good, thus the Empower Project. The signing of the Memorandum of Understanding with Caritas signifies commitment to providing such support. It's about institutional strengthening, capacity building, uh, accompaniment and direct funding of local humanitarian actors. The idea is here is to uh, have a quick response, quick but efficient. So the ideas where you want to achieve, the desire outcome is fast response to save life. First, first and quality response to save life. The Caritas is known for its prompt response to emergencies Hence, the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding will facilitate a better understanding of the designing of prompt response to emergencies. What I'm amazing about this is the capacity strengthening, which is very important, so that we are able to respond, as you said, be the first to respond and also to save lives. That's the, the goal of, of, of our mission. So with that, we want to um, assure you that we rise up to the occasion. We want to assure you that we will um, continue the collaboration with you. I want to assure you that we will keep to our own part of the, of the agreement. Such moves seeks to complement government's efforts in addressing emergencies, hence a welcoming news to the National Disaster Management Agency. Sierra Leone, as we all are, we are very much prone to disaster here, whether it's a man-made or natural. But Caritas has always been the first responder, even before sometimes we get there, through CRS majority of the time, or before even we get there, before the form we release, but they have always been a center of it. So um, having this um, empowerment project is very important to the government, especially to NGMA, because we are in charge of coordination for um, whenever disaster strikes. The Empower Project will, among other things, promote the leadership of humanitarian response by local organizations like Caritas that have a nationwide coverage. Ronald Jomorovia, AYV News, Freetown. 
Business people in Freetown have expressed keen concerns following the recent decision by the Ministry of Transport and Aviation to hold vehicular movement and push carts along Sanya Bacha streets from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. The announcement has sparked discontent among business owners and drivers who fear the potential economic ramifications this directive will cause. Our business reporter, Maria Maso Nikoroma, has been following up on this. Sunny Abacha State, sitting at the heart of Freetown, is spectacular for its ability to host a number of business ventures that impact daily lives. The recent release from the Ministry of Transport and Aviation to halt vehicular movement and push carts along Sunny Abacha State from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily seemed troubling for many who dwell therein. In an exclusive interview with AYV, the Deputy National Secretary General for Sierra Leone Importers Association, Sheriff Barry, conveyed the association's apprehensions, emphasizing how this decision could bring all business activities within the situated locations to a standstill. It is a blunder on the side of the Ministry of Transportation, uh, business people as stakeholders, as far as business or other entities are involved. We should have been informed, then we sit down with uh, the Ministry of Transportation, then we find a solution, an amicable solution that will not affect pedestrians, it will not affect passengers, and it will not affect as well as business people. But putting such a notice means that we are to close our shops. Business owners and drivers are urging the ministry to reconsider through constructive dialogue with stakeholders to find balanced solutions that addresses traffic concerns without jeopardizing essential business operations. They can say no, no one now. How the shop they go to get goods to sell to people? So this is a pressure for us. We're gonna come there. We survive. Now if they say now, no, we not come with load. They must cannot come. How do people get goods for sale at the shop? Now, now people they don't know what to do, now they don't value the pack. So at least if they say, let me try not pack here, yeah. we'll never be with you. Because although people are supposed to buy in market, if you don't want to say whether you buy market, then you pay for buy market. Because of why? But you cannot for take up a good time. So who the big government, they uh, help you. How will they pack more to try? Let me see. We're not fine, because over at least we'll push, we'll get to survive here. We'll have a plan for go do bad again. You see, but we're not going to so. A lot of fighting they do we, obviously. Hey, it's very massive for you, Nasty Raluna. Now we day. Now we day. We live where we pick in there. I like we get college pick in there. We get pick in the private school. Now we can't drag. So if you stop then see then now we can't seek. Now we go take load. We can't put her inside. Now we go easy with we. All efforts to reach the Ministry of Transport and Aviation on the aforesaid proofs futile. AYV remains committed to provide updates on this developing situation as it impacts daily life. Mariama Sonikoroma, AYV.